Hello and welcome. My name is Junior Perez and I'm a developer at 360 Works. This video will be technical in nature and serve as a walkthrough for a MirSync server to server configuration using FileMaker Server and a MySQL database. We're going to be walking through the configuration slide by slide and I'll be pointing out features specific to configuring a MySQL database. The reason we're releasing this video is recently we've seen a growing demand from clients with large databases on FileMaker Server who want to mirror that data on a server better suited for high volume web traffic like MySQL. We think MirSync is a solution for this purpose and includes a built-in workflow to create your MySQL tables from scratch as well as keep your data in sync. So let's go ahead and dive right in. For anyone wondering what my environment is, everything is on Amazon Web Services, which is essentially Amazon's cloud computing platform. I have FileMaker Server 19 installed on a Microsoft 2016 EC2 instance, and I'm using a MySQL RDS instance, also on AWS. RDS just indicates it's a relational database whereby I don't have to worry about the back end, what uh, OS it's running on. Uh, I just configure it and it's ready to go. MirSync 6 is installed on the Microsoft instance. Uh, and just a note, for high volume workflows, we recommend MirSync be installed on a dedicated server, uh, ideally Linux. And if you have any questions about that, um, 360 Works does provide MirSync hosting on a dedicated Linux box. As with all MirSync projects, we begin with the configuration client. In the event this is your first time using MirSync, I'll give a quick recap on how to get here. After you've run the installer on your server, this website should pop up. It's essentially a website being served by your MirSync instance, which provides you some essential functions, such as downloading the configuration client or sending us bug reports. As long as the server on which MirSync is installed is publicly accessible or otherwise reachable by your computer, you should be able to hit this page from any browser. And I recommend running the configuration client from your PC. because It's probably a better experience than doing it through a screen share or remote desktop session. So with that out of the way, let's create our configuration. Let's click on this new configuration button and we'll go with this third option for server to server syncs. As for deciding which server should be the hub and which should be the spoke, one database should start off with records and one should start off empty. The database with records should be considered the hub and the database that starts off empty should be the spoke. If you're syncing more than two servers, Feel free to get in touch with us as to any other configuration questions. But in this case, I'll make FileMaker Server the hub. And yes, MirSync is also installed on my FileMaker Server machine. And I'm not using IP addresses, I'm using a domain name so we can stick with this global address. I'll provide it some credentials to access the database. FileMaker server password. Great, we can select the database. Hit next. This panel covers documentation on creating your sync layouts. It's essential reading, but it's covered in other videos. So we'll skip that. And now we get to the spoke configuration. We already designated FileMaker Server to be our hub, so we know MySQL is a spoke, and I pre-populated some information such as your endpoint, user credentials, and this part's pretty cool. If you already have a MySQL database that mirrors what you want to get out of FileMaker, you can select that database here, or you can create a new database altogether. So let's try that. And there we go. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my SQL client I have off screen. 
and show you that if we are to refresh databases, we'll see that invoice sync database right here. It's empty right now, but we haven't created the tables yet. We'll get there. If you already have a database, chances are some of the table and field names might be different than what you have in FileMaker. If you select this radio button, the configuration will bring up additional panels that allow you to map tables and fields. In my case, we're creating the SQL tables from FileMaker, so I expect them to have identical field and table names. On this slide, we're verifying our spoke selection. And on this slide, we're tasked with selecting all the layouts in our FileMaker file, which are going to be used for sync purposes. So prior to starting this configuration, I created these layouts. These are all the tables I want to sync. They're empty. Um, there's no fields on them in my case, no script triggers, nothing just a direct portal basically for the data API to access the fields on these tables. And note that you can also choose this option. Let's say you were to have you know, 30 tables. As long as all your layouts, all your sync layouts have some consistent prefix, MirrorSync will automatically detect and select them. This slide is one of the more important ones but there's nothing specific to MySQL, but I'll breeze through it regardless. Um, we always assume someone's going to be accessing FileMaker server from a different time zone. So go ahead and take that in mind and make the proper accommodations. This involves making uh, an extra modification timestamp field that actually makes an adjustment for time zones. Feel free to look at the documentation for more information on that. I'm going to opt for the manual key setup. MirrorSync will still do its best to select our primary keys. I just want to be able to see them and make sure we got the right ones. Select MirrorSync Manage if you use serial numbers as primary keys, or otherwise Developer Manage if you're using UUIDs as primary keys. MirrorSync works equally well with either, but there is an advantage to using UUIDs. If a sync doesn't work for some reason, you can manually do an import to transfer the records over yourself. I'm not trying to filter any of the fields. I want to just sync all the fields on my layout, so I'm opting with the sync all fields. Alternatively, if there are certain fields you want to emit from your sync, you can put them on your sync layouts and select the sync only fields on layout. And most users go with this merge changes together, and most recent changes win in the event there's a conflict and merging is required. And I like to point out if you want to change the, any of these settings on a table by table basis, you can do that here as well. At the very top of this panel, there's the option to designate sync direction. By default, it's bidirectional, meaning record counts on both hub and spoke will be mirrored. But we do have the option to do one way, which is great if one of your servers is going to serve a read-only function, like generating reports. So of course we can do one way from hub to spoke, or one way from spoke to hub. So for this demo, I'm going to opt out of time zone considerations and let's go to the next slide. Looks like MirrorSync did the job. Got the right primary key, modification timestamp, and creation timestamp for all my tables. When it comes to foreign key mapping, we suggest you go ahead and do your best to configure mapping between tables. If you're using developer managed keys or UUIDs, this is less important, but it is very essential if you're using serial numbers as your primary keys. In my case, I've gone ahead and done my best to illustrate my relationships. And my relationships are displayed here. So this is the moment we've been waiting for. We've gone ahead and configured our sync between FileMaker server and MySQL.
We created the MySQL database, but we haven't created the MySQL tables. One of the best things about MirSync in terms of this configuration is it gives you the option to do that for you. Before running the execute SQL command, I'd like to show you what things look like in MySQL. So I'm using a lightweight client called SQL Ace. And as you can see, this is the MySQL endpoint we set up earlier. We're looking at the invoice sync database, which we created during the spoke configuration, but there's no tables. So let's create those tables. I'll click on this button and we see a prompt letting us know if the tables already exist, they will be deleted. That's fine. Great. And you'll likely have to perform a refresh. I find toggling to another database and then coming back sometimes does the trick. And there we go. So what we're seeing are the newly generated tables based on FileMaker tables. And you can see all the data field types, our primary key, timestamps. And at this point, you can go ahead and practically make changes. It may be easier to do changes here as opposed to in our uh, massive SQL script. For example, I find description fields often tend to exceed the 255 character limit. So I'll proactively change this varchar to a text field. And this client's pretty handy. It shows you what your other options are. MySQL being concerned with efficiency, there are many different options sometimes for the same field types. So for text, you have medium text, long text. Blobs are the SQL equivalent of a container field. You have tiny blobs, medium blobs, and it goes on. And in the event one of your SQL fields is unable to accommodate all of the data in a FileMaker field, MirSync will let you know and it'll specify which field um, so that you can make the necessary changes. So let's go ahead and say we're finished. And let's try an initial sync. So in order to do just that, you hit the sync now button. And initial syncs obviously will take a lot longer than incremental syncs. MirSync will essentially have to, you know, build its sync data, kind of accomplish some recognition of uh, how many records are at each table. Great, and it looks like we're already done. I'm thinking a relatively small database, as you can see, with only a few hundred records. And, okay, this is great. So it's telling us that on the quote table, the description column was too small. And that's actually after we made that change to make the quote description field of text. So let's go ahead and make it a medium, which should accommodate up to 16 million characters. When field contents are truncated as a result of an SQL field type not being large enough to accommodate the data, MirSync won't know to retry those insertions in which data was truncated. There's two ways we can fix this. If we go back to the configuration and right click it, we can reset the sync data, which gives us the chance to basically redo the initial sync. Upon trying to sync again, you'll get an option to either delete the spoke or rebuild sync data. In this case, we want to blow away the records in SQL and populate them from our FileMaker hub. So once that prompt comes up, I'm going to select Delete Spoke. Essentially just redoing the initial sync. And hopefully with that change to the description field and the quotes table, we won't have an issue with uh, data truncation. Great, it's done. And I don't see any warnings. 
Our other option for fixing this would be to resync old records. This presents users with an option to resync a table or tables that you've already synced. So we want to go with a timestamp from before uh, that initial sync happened. So just to be safe, I'll go back a couple hours. We'll get an indication that internally the timestamp was updated. And next time we sync, MirSync will basically do a comparison of the records on Hub and Spoke for that table and make any changes if necessary. It looks like we may have already synced. And again, we fixed the record while I was demonstrating the reset sync data option. So it makes sense that there was no updates. Yep, that just updated. So we should be good. With that last modification out of the way, we are officially done with our first FileMaker server to MySQL MirSync configuration. The last step is to make sure AutoSync is enabled, which by default is every 60 seconds. And feel free to make this lower or higher depending on your organizational needs. Knowing that we'll be syncing every minute, I'm ready to create a web interface using my MySQL database and knowing that any inserts, updates, and deletions made to FileMaker will be pushed automatically to MySQL and vice versa. This allows me to build a much more scalable and reliable web application backed by AWS managed databases without losing all the convenience and rapid development of FileMaker. Again, my name is Junior. Thanks for watching.